How many credit cards does the average American consumer have? Hmm. Find out the answer to this question and more on this week's episode of Reality Check. Every week we'll talk with internet personalities about what life costs and hear about their financial journeys along the way. This week's guest is Luke Holt. Luke is a dad and credit cards points pro, currently helping others get the most out of their credit card rewards and travel for less. So Luke, what's something surprising or unexpected that people might not know about you? Well, when I'm asked that question, I think the fact that I have a credit card rewards YouTube channel would surprise most of the people that know me. <laughs> my, my hobbies are powerlifting and I used to compete in mixed martial arts and grappling. And this is probably the furthest thing from that. And most people really don't realize I do this. Yeah, that's amazing. Well, I'm excited to dig deeper into that. But first, I have these 10 financial questions for you that the average American probably should know, but most actually don't. How do okay. you feel about this? <laughs> uh, I, I feel like I am average American, so I think I can do okay. average, at least average. There we go. <laughs> there we go. All right. I like that. Well, let's hop right into it with question number one. How much is a senator's salary? A senator's salary, I want to say it is $260,000 a year. You are very generous. It is actually only 174000 Wow. They do get benefits, but um, yeah, salary 174. All right, question number two. What is the median home price in the US? Medium home price, I'm gonna say $290,000. Um, it's actually closer to 400, 398,500. Wow. Yeah. I live in the Midwest, we're, we're, it's much more affordable there you go. here. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I live in LA. Wow. It's not. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so between the two of us, I guess that's how they yeah. that's yeah. how they get that number. Of, <laughs> you know? <laughs> right on. All right. Question three. What was the average annual amount that Americans spent on groceries last year? So 2021. Are we talking about families or individual people? Um, individual households. Okay. Um, eight hundred dollars a month. Ooh. At, wait, can I well? See, we eat a lot in my house, so so we're yeah. we're about a thousand to eleven hundred a month, and there's only three of us now, so I'm kind of embarrassed by that number. But I'll <laughs> stick I'll stick with eight hundred a month. Yeah, it's it's actually not quite that high. It's fifty two hundred <laughs> per year. Maybe we need to change some things <laughs> in my house. <laughs> no, do you? Everybody's different. It's an average, you know? <laughs> so obviously there's credit card rewards for everything from groceries, obviously, to travel. What was it that first got you excited about the idea of leveraging some of these benefits and really taking advantage? That's a great question. I, I think I started out like a lot of folks start out. I started out with a basic cash back card. And when I started seeing mm -hmm. that with fairly high credit and being financially responsible, I was getting rewarded with cash. That really motivated me to kind of dive into that game and, and see what else was out there. But a basic cash back setup for me really motivated me to, to um, really straighten up my personal finance and, and get more involved in that. Excellent. I think that cash is a very <laughs> motivational, a very <laughs> motivational thing. So that of course. makes perfect sense. <laughs> okay. Question number four. We're zero for three, but we're the game is young. There's still plenty of time. <laughs> good shape. We're good. What is the average cost of an international round trip flight leaving from the US? Now see, that's a funny question because I don't pay cash for my for my international flights. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna say forty five hundred dollars. Yeah, it's not really that high. It's nine hundred and fifteen. <laughs> Oh, wow. 915, yeah. Yeah, I, I like to ride in the front when I go to other countries, so maybe it's a little more. <laughs> yes. Okay, what percentage of Americans in the U.S. do not have health insurance? Wow. 55%. No, I'm going with my gut, 55%. Um, it's actually only 9.2%. <laughs> or about 30 thought, million Americans. <laughs> I am not doing very good at this. <laughs> That's okay. I'm actually happy you're wrong in this case because right. that would mean a lot of people do not have health insurance. So <laughs> question six. I'm interested to see what you guess on this one. How many credit cards does the average American consumer have? 
Average American consumer probably has two credit cards. Two. Closer to four. It's 3.84, oh, wow. which is about four. But I'm guessing that you have more than that, probably. Yeah, quite a bit more than that. <laughs> Do you have any special tricks or ways that you keep track of the different cards and the different rewards to make sure that you're taking the most, that you're getting the most out of them? My special trick is it's my hobby and I don't, I don't think anyone else does this the way I do, but every morning when I wake up and have my cup of coffee, I check every one of my accounts and I, it's a fun game for me. So it's not hard for me to keep up with every little category. My problem is keeping my wife, my player two on board with which card she's supposed to be using <laughs> at, at which place. Yes, that is important. If you're going to share expenses with a partner, you got to be on the same page about using she's, this card. Yeah, here she's <laughs> pretty good about it now because, well, she likes to go to Paris in summertime and, you know, Hawaii. We're going to Hawaii this year. So I think oh, once awesome. we started doing that, she got pretty motivated to use the correct cards. <laughs> Definitely. Take the most out of those rewards. All right. Question number seven. What is the average cost to take a family of four to a major league baseball game? If you consider a drink and a hot dog for everyone in the family and then parking. And then of course the ticket. So drink, hot dog, ticket, parking. I have done this recently, so I should know this answer. $240. You know what? I'm giving you that. I'm giving you that. $204.76. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I've, I've done that recently, but I, it's hard. <laughs> These are tough questions. Well, the next one's a multiple choice, so okay. maybe that'll make it slightly easier. What is the most expensive city in the U.S. to live? Do you think it's A, Hilo, Hawaii, B, Los Angeles, California, C, Manhattan, New York, or D, Boston, Massachusetts? I'm going to go with Manhattan, New York. Manhattan, New York. Yes, okay. 776000 $946 to buy something in Manhattan. They're all much, much more expensive than where I live in central Ohio, so. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> well, I think that the idea of like a $776,000 property feeds into the misconception that people have that you have to be wealthy probably to live in New York. What do you think are some sure. misconceptions that people have about credit card rewards or travel points or like some of the myths that we can maybe debunk right now? I think most people grow up with the same very dated way of thinking that you get a credit card for emergencies. When I think a lot of people now with the advent of social media and all this content we have that people are learning that cash is for emergencies. Um, I think a lot of people grew up and their parents told them that if someone had a lot of credit cards, that means they're probably in a lot of debt, which is not necessarily the case. It's, it, it, that shouldn't be the case. So I think there's just a lot of the way people are raised with the attitude towards credit cards. Credit cards are a very, very powerful tool, a financial tool, but they can also be a double-edged sword. They could really put people in a bad spot. And I think a lot of us, when we are young, we get our first access to credit cards and we don't handle them correctly. So maybe we get a bad attitude towards those credit cards later in life and we pass those misconceptions on to other people. Absolutely. Financial education, I think, is very important. All right. Question number nine. What percentage of adults in the U.S. are unemployed? Oh, I, you know, that's something I was keeping up with in the last couple of years, but not quite lately. I, I'm going to go with 6.8%. It's not that high. It's 3.7 now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Final question. The reality check. How much does it cost per year to raise a child in the U.S.? Okay, let's, I'm going to go $17,000. $17,000 is? Well, I'm sure I'm not even close. Correct. Wow. <laughs> well, I have one of those. The spot on. Yeah. <laughs> You're like doing the mental calculations. $17,000 is spot on. <laughs> I have one, and mine is actually at the doctor's office now. He has a cough, so I'm sure there that's going to cost. It's going to add to that seventeen grand. Oh, I hope he's okay. <laughs> He'll be good. He's strong. Good. Well, <laughs> obviously, raising kids is expensive. Are there yes. any ways that you can think of that parents can potentially leverage 
maybe travel rewards or credit card points or things like that and kind of fit those into their family financial planning strategy? I th here's my journey when it comes to that. I was a brand new step parent. I went from living alone to a house of five people. I'm a big believer that if you come from where I come from, which is a small town in the Midwest, you have to experience other places and you have to, you know, experience other, other types of people because you have to be rounded out some way. And right. I made sure my stepchildren got to experience some different places. And when I became a father myself, you know, I was like everyone else. You turn to somebody and say, how do I do this? And right. I, had a men I had a mentor and he was, his background education was in early childhood development. And he said, don't worry about it. Just don't buy him anything. Just take him places. And I said, I can do that. <laughs> so, yeah. so my boy is six. And even though he lives in a very small town, he's been to Ireland. He's been to LA. He's been to Miami. He, he can tell you, you know, several different places where people don't talk like he does, where people look different than he does. So he has a much different perspective than most of the kids around this area. And I think that's the most important thing to, to kind of round out a young person. Absolutely. I think that that is, those are the memories that he's actually going to remember. He's not going to remember probably the, are GI Joe still cool? He's not going to remember the GI Joe. Uh, or the, he, he's an iPad the, kid. So there we go. Whatever, yeah. whatever kids are into, but he and, will and he, remember those cool places that you've taken him and the memories he left, that he had there. He left an iPad in Dublin, Ireland. So he'll remember that. <gasps> oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you'll remember that too. Mm, wow. Absolutely. <laughs> Well, Luke, three out of 10, not bad. Thank you. It's not great. No, come on. <laughs> they, they were pretty tough. They were tough questions. They were actually. You got that last question, which I thought well, would be the hardest one. You that's in, it now that one. On. That one's in my wheelhouse. I know that one. <laughs> well, Luke, thanks again for playing with us. If people are feeling inspired and they want to find you, how can they find you? I am on all the major social platforms, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and mostly YouTube at Luke's Points and Miles. Awesome. And you guys, we'll make sure to leave that down for you in the description below in case you missed it. See you next time. Thanks for playing Reality Check. How'd you stack up against our guests? Did you win? Let us know down in the comments below. And be sure to check out the other episodes to keep playing along with Reality Check. I'll see you there. Bye.